There are some great devices that you can use to cook with charcoal in an emergency. Stay tuned. I'm Kylene. And I'm Jonathan. We are the Provident Preppers. Charcoal is a great outdoor emergency cooking fuel because it is safe to store and has a very long shelf life. In this video, we will talk about some of the cooking devices we like to use. Some of these are portable and some of these use a variety of fuels. This versatility makes them really important to you in an emergency situation. Stay tuned. In our last video, we talked about using charcoal as an emergency cooking fuel. This video is a follow-up to that. We're going to talk about some of the tools that you can use with that charcoal. This is based on the post charcoal, inexpensive fuel for outdoor emergency cooking. As you consider what variety of charcoal is the best for you to store for emergency purposes, it's important to take into consideration the device that you will be burning that charcoal in. In the photo, we have three different varieties of charcoal. The first is the original charcoal that has fillers and binders. The next one is a natural briquette that is just compressed wood. And then the third is the lump charcoal that's in its natural form. There are pros and cons to each one of these, and you need to decide which one is best for you to store for emergency purposes. You will want a nice set of outdoor cooking tools because this is a little different than cooking in your kitchen. You also need the charcoal starters, some hot mitts, and other important tools that will allow you to do this effectively. Many devices require that the charcoal be already started and hot before you put that into the cooking device. These charcoal chimneys allow you to get that done very easily. We use two methods to pre-light our charcoals. The first is using newspaper in the charcoal starter, as you can see in the upper left corner there. My favorite is to use the safe heat. When you use safe heat to start your charcoal, you need to make sure that the grate in that chimney is high enough above the top of the safe heat to light it and not smother it. So you, do, you may have to do a little bit of adaptation. I really like using safe heat because I never have to go back and I blow on the newspapers or worry whether or not it started. I just light it, put it under there. I know that that charcoal is lit. Dutch ovens are a great option for emergency cooking. They are almost indestructible and you can create almost any food that you can create in your kitchen, you can cook in a Dutch oven with a little bit of practice and skill. When we talk about emergency cooking, fuel is very precious and it's important to conserve to the very best of our ability. By Dutch oven cooking inside of a volcano, you use significantly less fuel to accomplish the same job. The other thing that I like about the volcano is that it can be used as a fire pit. So if you don't have charcoal, you actually have the ability to start a fire and use those coals to cook with. The volcano stove is also available with a propane adapter, which increases the versatility of this device. But the fact that it is so energy efficient makes it a wonderful emergency preparedness tool. The EcoQ grill used to be called the Pyromid, and it's because of this little pyramid shape but you can not only grill your hamburgers in it, but it is possible by where you place your coals to bake in it, grill in it, fry in it, do anything that you need to do because it's a really cool design and it's very energy efficient. One of the other things that I like about the EcoQ grill is that you do not have to pre-light your charcoals. You can just put your newspaper down underneath that grate. There's a second grate lower which you would put your charcoals on if you were going to bake, but this higher level is for grilling. And you can just stick your newspaper under there and light your newspaper and it will light it right there so there's no need for that extra step. The cob cooker would be my number one choice except for the fact that it will only cook for two or three people. If that's all you are cooking for, this is absolutely fantastic. But cooking for the large crowd that I do, a Dutch oven would be a better choice for me. But if I'm making a small meal, this is fantastic. In the lower left-hand corner, the, you can see the charcoals that sit in that little basket. It only takes eight to 10 charcoals to cook in a cob cooker. The dome lid helps it to be very energy efficient and the design is just fabulous. You can see you can cook the same hamburgers or you can use the metal skillet to make just about anything. We cooked pancakes, we made scalloped potatoes. There's also another grill that comes with it. 
It's very light and it comes in a nice handy carry case. This is a fantastic emergency preparedness tool for using charcoal as an emergency fuel source. All of the things we've talked about so far are a bit pricey, but this is something that you can do with very little money. For between $10 and $20, you can make a charcoal reflector oven. This design we used an Apple box, and you can see in the upper left-hand corner that there are holes for ventilation. The original design actually tells you to put a rock or something under. Charcoal needs a lot of oxygen in order to burn well. But we, because I'm married to an engineer husband, and he said, there's gotta be a better way to do this. We just cut holes in both sides of that box to allow for some good cross ventilation. The original design also has a window which you make with an oven safe cooking bag, like a turkey roasting bag. However, we found that when you use it over time, that bag just turns brown. You can't visualize anything, so it's a, just a place for you to lose that heat. In subsequent Apple Box ovens that we have created, we do not you put the window in it because it's pretty much useless. It looks nice if you're not really using it and you're just trying to, to sell the design, but it's not efficient. The original design also has a cooling rack, just a cookie cooling rack, sitting on four pop cans. This is a little bit unstable, and so my engineer husband took an inexpensive portable grill and cut it down to size so that it would fit inside of the Apple Box oven, creating a much more stable cooking surface. One of the other things we did to make sure that we don't lose energy to the ground is to put the coals on a inverted cookie sheet or a grill liner, some way to get that off the ground so you're not sinking that heat into the ground, especially on a cold day. And remember, you never want to put charcoals directly on concrete because that heat can explode your concrete. Step-by-step -step instructions to create your own Apple Box charcoal reflector oven can be found on our website, The Provident Prepper. Go into the search bar and just search for Apple Box reflector oven and step-by-step -step instructions will come up. Another design that we really like uh, was created by Dr. Stephen Jones and this is actually a paper box oven, a box that reams of paper came in. Again, it's covered with foil and you can see the ventilation holes. Then we use dowels covered with aluminum foil tape to create a rack that our pan will sit on. Again, in this case, you have to have an inverted grill liner or a cookie sheet, something to keep those grills up off the bottom of that box. If you put charcoals directly on the box, even if there's aluminum foil over it, they will burn. So in this case, you really have to have that inverted baking sheet or something like that to make sure that those charcoals are not touching the surface. And again, these plans are available on our website. Just go to the Provident Prepper and in the search bar, type in paper box charcoal reflector oven. The one thing that I really like about this oven is that it only requires eight to 10 charcoals to bake at 350 degrees. That's saving a lot of fuel. That chocolate cake in that nine by 13 glass pan, do you see how well it fits in there? It's, it's just made for that size and that size is perfect to feed my family. You could use a smaller pan in there very easily. You can bake a sheet of cookies. You can do just about anything that you need in this oven when it comes to baking. So it's a good option for very little money. And of course, another option that works well is the standard barbecue grill. These aren't probably quite as energy efficient and that should be a consideration, but these will get the job done as well. So the choice is yours. You can start now. You can prepare by storing some charcoal and getting some fun devices. Or you can use the pitchfork that's been used in the barn for manure and hay. It's all up to you. We encourage you to do the former. And it's important to note that you don't have to get all these tools. I would start out with some of the simple tools and practice with them. You decide what's going to work best for you and yours. Here are some resources that we encourage you to look at. Emergency cooking, 12 family favorites. Also, expected storage life for emergency fuels. And where can I safely store popular fuels for emergencies? These are great resources. We also encourage you to look at our show notes. And please go to our website. We've got a massive amount of information there on a whole variety of subjects. Theprovidentprepper.org You do not need to have every one of these cool devices that we have shown you here today. You just need to select one or two that you can use during an emergency situation with your family and turn that stressful situation into a grand adventure. And now for the questions of the day. What experiences do you have cooking with charcoal? What are your favorite devices and what comments do you have for our viewers? Comment below.
and thanks for being part of the solution.